The Buddha teaches three governing principles, three ways of thinking to keep yourself on the path. And two of them have to do with goodwill, metta. The first one is the goodwill you have for yourself. You remind yourself you entered on this path because you wanted to put it into suffering. Basically, you loved yourself. But now what? If you're planning to leave the path, it doesn't mean you no longer want to put it into suffering. What happened to your goodwill for yourself? That's one way of thinking. The other way has to do with other people's goodwill for you. The Buddha calls it taking the world as a governing principle. It means reminding yourself that there are beings in the world who can read your mind. Suppose it was the Buddha reading your mind, and he saw that you were planning to give up on the path. What would you think? Partly you, you think in this way, and you feel embarrassed, because here's someone else who has good will for you, wants to see you put an end to suffering, and you're going to let someone else have more good will for you than you have for yourself. Thinking in these ways shows how good will is one of the guardian meditations. It's one of the ways of keeping yourself on the path, because you start out, may I be happy, may I be free from stress and pain. Well, where are you going to find happiness? It's not going to come floating by. It's going to come because you've done something that's conducive to happiness. Think about the Buddha's expressions for expressing what it means to extend goodwill to yourself, good goodwill to others. And they're not simply, may you be happy, happy, happy. They also include thoughts about, may you not behave in an unskillful way. And one of the suttas the Buddha expresses it as saying, may no one despise anyone, or wish, at, wish ill to anyone. In other words, not only may these people be happy, but, but may they not create the causes for unskillful behavior, which would then lead to results of unskillful behavior, pain and suffering. Which means when you think of a goodwill for yourself, it should include that. Not only may I be happy. But may I understand the causes for happiness, and may, may I act on them. Then you spread the same thought to others, hoping that they will behave in a skillful way. And you place no limits on your goodwill. Now you might ask yourself, is there anybody out there for whom it's hard to have? feel goodwill, and some people will probably come to mind. But then you have to ask yourself, what do I gain from their suffering? What would the world gain from their suffering? You might say, well, maybe they'll come to their senses. But a lot of people, when they suffer, don't come to their senses at all. They just get more and more entrenched in their old ways. The world would be a much better place if people could understand and then act on their understanding. And if there's any way you can help, you'd be happy to help. Thinking in these ways protects you in lots of ways, guards you in lots of ways. You want to keep you on the path. Because you remind yourself, if you really want to be happy, this is what you got to do. Goodwill is a universal, good human quality. But it becomes specifically Buddhist when you start thinking about what the Buddha had to say about what leads to happiness. You think about his goodwill in teaching us to begin with. I mean, here he taught what? The end of suffering. How to put an end to suffering. That was motivated by goodwill. 
It's the best way to find happiness. The Buddha's greatest gift would be when people come to see him. He would start teaching them. He'd start with a graduated discourse, talking about the, the virtues of giving, the virtues of observing the precepts, the rewards of giving, the rewards of precepts. But then the drawback of sensuality. In other words, the rewards would be either happiness in the human realm or in the higher realms. But they have their drawbacks. Because the kind of pleasure that comes in this way is not going to last forever. And if you get used to having nothing but good things happening to you as a result of your past good karma, it begins to spoil you. And you get complacent, and you start misbehaving, and then you fall again, and then you have to start all over again. And so when the Buddha saw that people could think in these ways, then he would teach them the Four Noble Truths. Because the truths are counterintuitive in a lot of ways. But as he saw, you, you follow these truths, you follow the duties with regard to them. And many times as he would teach people these truths, they would gain their first experience of awakening, what's called gaining the Dharma Eye. And that was his gift to them. There were even people who went to see the Buddha to argue with him. There were even cases where people were sent to kill him. And this is how he responded. He talked to them in a way that made them gain awakening. A sign of the great compassion and the great goodwill that he had for all beings. So as I said earlier, think about the goodwill the Buddha had for you. What goodwill do you have for yourself? If you content yourself with anything less than gaining awakening, you can't really say that you have goodwill, at least not in the Buddha's eyes, not in the framework provided by the Dhamma. So goodwill is a guardian, and it keeps you motivated to practice. Now there are other passages in the canon that talk about how goodwill protects you, protects you from the bad influences of past bad actions. If your goodwill is large and expensive, it lessens the impact of past bad actions. There's even a passage where it says that someone who is extending thoughts of goodwill is not going to die from fire or, or weapons. But the real protection is that it keeps you motivated to keep on practicing, because it forces you to think about, well, what is happiness? I mean, it's pleasant enough to think, may all beings be happy, happy, happy. And then you start thinking more about, well, what would real happiness be? I knew of a woman one time who was having difficulties with her landlord. And she was saying that she was trying to have goodwill for him. She was imagining him with a nice house, a swimming pool, lots of girlfriends, a fancy car. And he said, wait a minute, no. You can have those things and still be miserable. Real goodwill has to do with, may you be deeply happy at heart. It has to come from developing skillful qualities in mind. And the real happiness, of course, comes from that, seeing that what the Buddha taught is true. There is a deathless element. There is a way that the mind doesn't have to suffer from aging, illness, and death. When that becomes your standard for happiness, then goodwill really does protect you and guard you because you're not going to be willing to settle for anything less. You develop those qualities that the Buddha said were key to his awakening, the persistence and the unwillingness to settle for second best. So thoughts of goodwill protect you not only from ill will, 
but they also protect you from laziness, complacency. If you think about them in the right way. This is where a generic good human quality becomes heightened as it practices in the context of the Dharma. And the more you think about it, the more it's good for you to think of it in that context too, and act on it as well. That's when goodwill do really does become a guardian meditation. <laughs>